Celeste and welcome to Find Your Purple. Well next week marks my two year anniversary of being on a plant based diet. So I thought I'd let you know I am still on it and what it means is basically I don't eat meat, chicken, fish, uh, dairy, eggs, anything like that. Now someone asked if I cheat and yes if I'm at a wedding or a birthday celebration and there's a cake and I feel like a piece of cake that day and I know there's eggs and butter in it I'll have a slice if I really want one. On Christmas Eve, we have a tradition in our house that it's been going on for 30 years that my four girls cook all day and make hors d'oeuvres like bacon wrapped chestnuts and artichoke dip and spinach dip and meatballs in a sauce and all of that kind of thing. And I will cheat on a few things. I won't go to the straight up meat. I don't do the chicken wings. I don't do the bacon wrapped chestnuts. But I might go to a cheese dip and have some. Or there's a crab puff my daughter makes. Now, this, this past year I ate a lot less than I did the year before. And that year I ate less than I did before. So I moved away from it. And we're adding a lot of vegan options so that I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. But I'm not one of those that can honestly say it's 100%, but I'd say it's 95%, 98% or better. Now, a plant base is a little bit different than a vegan. A whole food plant base stays off of processed food. I'm not 100% there yet. In fact, when I started and I went from being a meat eater to a vegan, I used meat substitutes more than I do now, but I'll still use a processed black bean patty for a hamburger, or I might use some of the noodles that are prepared without egg, that kind of thing. But I'm moving more and more away from it. Um, people say, well, you must not have eaten that much meat or cheese to be able to stop it. And it, and it wasn't that at all, because two years ago, if you asked me my favorite meal, it would have been a prime rib, medium rare. It would have been a stuffed potato, and that meant butter and sour cream and cheddar cheese and bacon bits and then maybe green onion on top for a vegetable I mean and a glass of wine I mean that would have been my favorite meal runner-up to that would have been barbecue ribs again with a stuffed potato um, so it was very much a part of my life but I met a woman who was a trainer and she was in her 60s as well and she and I got talking and she started me watching some movies and reading some books and the movies I watched initially was Fork Over Knives, um, Fat Sick and Nearly Dead, What the Health. Uh, and so there were several. That led me to others about dairy and uh, all of the studies about it. And that led me to books like The China Study and How Not to Die. And uh, four or five doctors. I, I listened to Dr. Greger, Dr. John McDougall, Dr. Esselstein. Dr. Campbell, who did the China study, and I follow them. They were, they were all MDs or RMDs. They practiced decades in some cases and came to the conclusion independently that they were treating symptoms and weren't really helping the people heal. And they came to realization that the diet was a major part of that process. And so they are all in agreement that we should be not eating meat products or dairy products. Uh, but there are so many books out there. So what I did is I made the decision that I would give it a go. And I kept watching the movies, reading the books, so that I had kept feeding myself with information. So when I saw that prime rib, I didn't go to it immediately. I would remember, okay, this is why I shouldn't be eating that. And I, after one year, I did blood test again. Everything was fine. And I'm coming up to another year, so I'll be doing some more blood tests. There's protein and vegetables, which I didn't know. There's calcium and vegetables, which I didn't know. So I'm actually much healthier than I was when I started. And I'm moving more as the time goes on. I'm moving, adding more and more veggies and more and more fruits to my diet. I'm starting juicing now, so I'll do another video on that. So I'm going to be making sure I'm getting much more of the fruit and vegetables and, and moving much more to the organic. But I, this is a lifelong thing. It's not 
Um, I've been doing it two years. I don't have a problem doing it. It's easy at home. It's pretty easy at most restaurants. It's only when I go to someone's house for dinner if I don't know them well. That's when it can get awkward and I need to kind of work with that sometimes. Because I used to think if someone was a vegan and they went to somebody's house and there was meat, that's the only thing you had, the people should just suck it up and eat it. But once you are on that page and you realize what the food does to you, I don't want to eat it. It's not appealing to me as much as it used to be. And I, if I'm going to cheat, I want to cheat on something I really want to cheat on, and uh, which I haven't had that feeling yet, but I'm not saying it won't happen someday. But I really encourage people. The dairy is the hardest thing, I think, for me to get off, the cheese. I mean, I cut it cold turkey, but that's the one I probably miss the most. But yet, after reading, and there's so much material out there, Dairy is the absolute worst thing for you, and especially if you're fighting any diseases. And so um, I'm now looking at Dr. Gerson, which again was back 100 years ago, and he discovered a cure for cancer, a cure for a lot of diseases via the diet. And for, again, it was a very regimented diet for those who are ill to help detox the body and then nourish the body. I'm using a variation of it because I'm hopefully not fighting any kind of illness that I'm aware of. But again, it just gives me more solid base to know this is the right thing for me. Because uh, food, ha for me and then for a lot of people, it's a social event, it's an emotional event, it's entertainment. Everything is around food. And that's been something I've had to really think through. And going on this program, was it made it easier to not go to fast foods because I was I would work late and I would just swing by a fast food on the way home so being on this diet I'm much much more conscious of what I eat if you're looking at your health especially if you're in your 60s you really can't mess around anymore and you might want to check out those movies again fork over knives what the health um, fat sick and nearly dead are three easy to watch movies and they will guide you to a lot more information that's out there and those doctors I mentioned I'll put them in the link below they have websites and the information's free so you can go out and look at the studies that go back into the 20s 30s and 40s and check out you know the information and all the testimonials and all of that because it's that food is good while you're eating it at that moment, but you pretty much can tell on your body that it's not doing any good. So it takes a little bit of discipline to start especially, but I'm good with it now. It's not a hardship to pass it up. Now when my daughter brings home you know, a Kentucky Fried Chicken or something, I can still look at it and say, yeah, that still looks good, but I'm not really tempted to eat it. It's not worth it to me anymore. And the kids, I have four daughters, they are, you know, say they'll never go vegan, but I've noticed and they've noticed they have eased into more vegetables and fruit and less meat and cheese. So, you know, they pay attention and they do make some changes and it's those little changes I think can make a little big difference. Here I am in my 60s just now making the change, so I'm hoping they're in their 20s and 30s that the little changes they're making now will build up over time. So that's it for now. I will talk in later videos about my stepping up with my juicing and adding that to um, my life and see how that goes. But after two years on a plant-based diet, I am a believer and I will stay with it. So, so as always, grab your cup of tea, sit back and let's start sharing. Until next time. Bye-bye.